such an important amal uh, from an Islamic point of view on the basis of Sharia, this amal, this deed that Allah has given to us. It's such an important deed that after rejecting it, neglecting it, what will be the hal of human being? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if, an, if a person rejects this deed or neglects this deed, then his situation is such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all my promises for that person, he, there are no promises for that person. Allah Akbar, no promise for that person. Now tell me that all the our deen is based on Allah's promises, the promise of Jannah, salvation from hellfire, the rewards of the hereafter. What is there that is not based on Allah's promise? And Allah says, whoever rejects this deed, for him there's no promise of mine. Allah Akbar. Such a big deed, massive deed. And in reality, the situation is that by rejecting that deed or leaving that deed, your life and world is destroyed and the deen is as if the building has collapsed. You know you're sat in someone's building and suddenly if that, the roof, the ceiling of that building collapses and it finishes everything underneath. So the deen's destruction is that big due to leaving that deed. And if we do that deed, Alhamdulillah, so imagine how important is that amal. Shall I tell you what amal that is? That I'm mentioning to you, everything I've told you is Quran and Hadith. So pay attention definitely in your life that what will our resurrection be, a hereafter be with regards to this amal that I'm about to tell you. What is the amal? Before salah, now listen how important wudu should be kamil, complete, not splashes of water, not talking. Kamil wudu, how do you do it? What is the basis of kamil wudu? Measurement gauge, how do you know if your wudu is kamil? The measurement gauge is sunnah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That do we do wudu according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The more your wudu is clear to the sunnah features, the more your wudu, if you have miswag, the duas, you'll sit down. The same way you do wudu according to the sunnah, you attach your wudu to the sunnah. In that way, your wudu will become more kamil, more kamil. And the more your wudu is kamil and complete, the action that you are preparing for salah, then the effects will come into force. The color will be evident because the hadith is telling us this. Yes? So the Prophet said, did you do wudu before salah or not? What did the Prophet say? Are you listening? Did you do kamil wudu? Did you do wudu according to my way, the way I have explained and prescribed, the way I taught you to do wudu? Did you do wudu in that way? So we should think now. We should think now, no, no, is salah done? Is it complete? Yes, it's complete. No, it's such an important action. Just two hadith I've told you. That for our deen, that's the pillar of our deen. Like this building, if you have a pillar, and if you take the pillar away, immediately the, the ceiling will collapse. The Prophet said, salah is just like this. That as soon as you've completed your salah, then your whole building of your deen, if you don't do this action properly, then your building of the deen will collapse. There's another hadith. Another hadith uh, I've just remembered. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the person salah is not correct, then no good deed of his is, of his is accepted. And then, all of the rewards in the rafter, whoever salah was better, his akhara will be better. His hereafter will be better. Now see how important. And this is the worldly basis. Even in the world, your life is beautiful, beyond beautiful. No comparison. Contentment and satisfaction and mercies and blessings. And you don't need big, big quantities, but you will have barakat in your home due to salah. From the heavens to the earth, Allah will send you rizq, wealth. Not that uh, you'll have a big house. Look how big his mansion is, long cars, and he's got a private jet. This is not barakat, blessing, subhanAllah. Barakat is somebody's home, you enter. As soon as you enter home, you feel the coolness, satisfaction. Their faces look so satisfied, their sofas are broken. Oh, look, his set is not uh, nice. And the curtains, they're not that special, they're hanging from the curtain rail, and the car, it's a small one. And people, they must be crying inside, distressed. But as soon as you enter into their home, you feel so content and beautiful in that mud hut and bare walls. And they will make you a nice cup of tea and present it to you. And all life long, you will feel the emotion of that teacup you drank. Why? Because in that cup, there's a halal cup of tea, halal pani, lawful milk, lawful sugar. 
Not, subhanAllah, beautiful, not that he'll make you a cup of tea in a beautiful ornament cup, and nice sosa, and he'll put you barfi, and laddus, and sweets, and says, hey, and inside after eating, all the ibadah, that becomes haram as well. Anlufal. Say, subhanAllah, do you understand what I'm saying? All of this, who changes this? Why? Because he established salah in his home. He put into the ears of his children, not that you're going to become this, you're going to become this, you must turn like this, you must do this. Into the ears of the children, he didn't say this. He wasn't afraid of the dunya. He wasn't scared of the world status and rank and elevation or collating wealth or accumulating wealth. He knew that the world would criticize him. What are you doing with your son? Have you thought about the career of your son, your children? Have you not done this? But what did he teach his children? That he emphasized, emphasized full effort, full vigor on the children. That before ilm, before Quran, first emphasis, he said to the child, he made the child namazi, salah, established salah into the lives of the children. He called out into the ears of the children, salah, and he demonstrated, he showed the direction of the masjid to the children. And he didn't open the books of chemistry and physics and put them into the hand of the children. He didn't make the children afraid of poverty or distress or criticism of people. Oh, people say, why do you waste your children? No, no. The biggest action he did was that I have made my son a namazi, a person who prays salah. Subhanallah. Made my pers- child a person who prays salah. This is not a contrast. When you make your child, your son, a person who has established life upon salah, I say this clearly in that home where there's salah, everything in the world comes to the house, science, chemistry, physics, everything will come into the house. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Whatever is in his destiny, he will follow that path. But he will become a namazi doctor, he'll be a namazi engineer. He will be a namazi accountant. He will pray salah. And when he prays salah, and he will go into his veins, then every action of his, every profession of his, you will see the barakat. There's no jama. Every moment it is for the compulsory to attestation and rank of ihsan. Why? Why? Ask me why. Because sharia and sunnah will give us success. It will be told that how do we do tazkiyah? We follow Sharia and Sunnah. You have to go to the Wali of Allah. The Quran tells us, Kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Go to the people. Who the sadiqeen. We go to them for tazkiyah. Why do you do tazkiyah? So that we can compete. So we can get khilafah. Deputies and become pious elders. No, no, no. This is not the reason. Wahid only soul. One soul reason. The reason, the purpose of doing tazkiyah is giving us a message to do purification. Why? As your inner state becomes clean, say subhanallah. As soon as your inner state becomes clean, purified, then at the same time your salah will become established and improved and elevated and your salah will reach to that station due to your purification. It will be as if you are seeing and watching Allah. According to that hadith, is anyone's salah like this? Yes, uh, forget about the people around me, I speak about myself. My life has passed, and I've rubbed my foreheads on the ground, on the earth, sometimes in Mecca or Medina. Has anyone ever felt that you are seeing Allah? So is this a drama, this hadith, that we are discussing? Who's this hadith for, that you should reach that station that you, as if you are seeing Allah? Is this for ghayr people? Strange people? Is it for these people? It's for me and you, this hadith. It's for us, but we have no recognition of this awareness. Why are we born? What do we need to attain before we leave this earth? When we go to Allah, Allah will ask us, is there one salah of yours such, in which you had a feeling that you could see me? Was there? Did you pray such a salah? You pray the salah, and I will remove the veils between you and me. Allah says, I'm your Rabb, I am your creator. Nothing difficult for me, Allah says. Nothing difficult for me. At least, at least get to that stage. If you can't do that, at least then feel this, at that stage that Allah, I tried hard, I made effort, but after this effort, I couldn't reach the elevated status. But the second station Allah made us aware, that at least if you don't feel, see me, then at least you should feel that your Rabb is watching you. Allahu Akbar. Tell me at least, what is the hal condition of our salah? For this reason, our salah is a waste. Our salah has not got to that rank, to that level. The reason for that is because we don't do tazkiyah. We don't do purification. Self-purification, we think that dhikr of Allah is a waste of time. If you ask someone, uh, Kullu shayin saqilatan, that there's a polish for everything, and the polish for the heart is dhikrullah. Allah's Nabi Sallam said, dhikrullah. The polish for the heart is dhikrullah. Why we sat here? Why we sat here? Why the ulama sat here? Scholars sat here? We're not here for some third action. Yes, I invite you to do dhikr. Why should we do dhikr? So that you can go to a peer, and you also become a peer. 
and then this is the work of the peers. No, every mu'min, Muslim man and woman must do dhikr kathir, purify their body in a state, and attain their objective. And what is their objective destination? Five times salah. Every mu'min's mazil is that he rubs his forehead on the earth and think, am I saying Allah? Oh, at least can I feel that Allah is watching me and the khala is coming to my heart and my sins 